everyone again. Uh, this work is uh, presenting behalf of Sobia Bano. She is not here, uh, unfortunately. So I'm presenting this work and try my best to present uh, his her research. Uh, in this research, uh, uh, we help the stakeholder to the uh, to represent the intelligent retrofits in regenerative building by using graph-based knowledge-based approach. So this research is mostly more focused on building life cycle assessment and embodied carbon research. Uh, the presentation agenda is start with the motivation, context, research gaps and challenges, and the research question and proposed methodology in this research work, and the results and finally conclude my presentation. Already discussed in my first presentation, the building is 40% energy consumption and also the emission is 36%. And one of the main reasons is buildings are very old. So therefore, we need to retrofit all the existing buildings. That is a huge building stock we need to retrofit. Let's suppose in, in Ireland, they want to retrofit 500,000 buildings to B2 rating. The B2 is, we can say, building us less than all the buildings you have to retrofit B2 to 2030. So we have only six, you can say, year left. But this is not realistic. It's very difficult to retrofit all the existing and convince the house old owner. And they will also want to install the 400,000 heat pump on existing and replace with the old boiler. That is also a bigger challenge. So they want to the policy maker, they want to double the renovation by 2030 to, um, to reduce the greenhouse and gas emissions. But if a typical building, if you want to retrofit, so maybe uh, the embodied carbon is very less, but if you want to high performance building, the embodied carbon is very increased. So we have to trade off and balance between operational and embodied as well when we retrofitting the existing building stocks. So therefore, this research is more focused on embodied carbon, how we can trade off between both of them. So you can say 39% of carbon emissions from residential sector is mostly consists of operational, but also the embodied carbon is 11%. But this rate will be double when we have retrofitting all the existing building stocks. So therefore, the trade-off between uh, embodied carbon and operational energy. So to reduce the emissions, it's essential for being able to add uh, methods and technology to uh, reduce this building life cycle throughout the cycle. There is all the different challenges. They already some of them already discussed because the data, data issues, scalability, flexibility, integration, and cost benefit analysis, and also the climate condition different to install and these things of retrofitting scenario for building life cycle assessment. So in this sense, we propose the uh, intelligent knowledge base that fill the different gaps, like efficiency, reduce the time and required for conduct the building life cycle assessment by using data collection and analysis process. The knowledge base also help in data management and integration of data from different sources for building life cycle assessment and also scalable approach by using this uh, advanced AI approach. It also helps the uh, stakeholder for non-expert to uh, use the knowledge base and also extract the knowledge from existing available that knowledge. So it helps the stakeholder for decision support making for suggesting more improvement by using intelligent knowledge base. The research question is in this paper is uh, how can intelligent knowledge base address the data scarcity issues and also provide reliable information for residential building life cycle assessment. The proposed methodology is start for, uh, they have uh, four phases. They start from scope and goal of the building life cycle assessment. We start with application approaches, data requirement, all the study period and system boundaries. Then in second phase, we uh, develop the intelligent knowledge base based on the, all the requirement. After that, perform the building, uh, life cycle assessment by using embodied carbon assessment or operational assessment to uh, check the and also trade off between both of them. And finally, 
the user, the stakeholder, input all the different scenario, check in our knowledge base, and analyze the different scenarios. So there is some methodology of intelligent knowledge base, how they work. It's collect all the data of related to embodied carbon from product material data from A1 to A3, data standard defined in LCA. And construction stage data, all the <coughs> energy uses data from building stock data, retrofit data, and end of life cycle data. These all data are collected from different sources and then perform the data pre-processing. For already discussed with you, because the unavailability of data, so, and mostly the large scale level, so there is urban topology approaches he used for building usage data for energy consumption and water usage data of B6 and B7 is standard for the use for a LCA analysis. And when the, all the data is collected, to use a knowledge based system. Knowledge based system mostly used in computer science term and AI technology. They use all the existing knowledge to extract the new knowledge from all the existing available data. The different approaches are mostly used. Uh, in this research, we use a rule base. Based on uh, the rules we define uh, from the research and existing studies and cases. And suppose we have example of retrofitting houses in existing cases. Uh, so how we can use this all existing cases for uh, future buildings as well. And the frame base is to give us all the results in one frame and one class to give the final results. So all the different data set for Irish, this, uh, all the case study applied on Irish case studies, the most proposed methodology. And here is all the knowledge requirement from different sources. Mostly the data is used from ICE data. Database is mostly used for building life cycle assessment. eco invent TM65 mostly for, uh, used for heat pump studies. Uh, and also Irish National Material Database also provide the local information of all the the major challenge is sometimes the material used for retrofitting, that data, data is not available on national level. So we can use all, if the data, that information is not available, we use, go for an international level information available. Similarly, the building stock data in building energy and performance certificates, building regulation, and also the tab, uh, tabloids also give the topologies and energy plus use for all the simulation result if the data is not available in some case study. So here example, we use ICE database, eco invent EPC uh, building regulation, and TM65 for heat pump studies, all data. We combine all data for pre-processing, and then IKVS is used, all store the data after pre-processing in MongoDB in use in this case study. MongoDB is, we can use, say that this is a non SQL approach, we can use in this study, like mostly use graph data. This we can use depend upon the requirement and also which is source. Mm -hmm. So in this case study, we only only use a semi-detached building for uh, analysis and perform the LC analysis scenario. For test, uh, uh, for further test the pre or after post retrofitting scenarios. Uh, so we upgrade the building fabrics building a wall, roof, and floor, and windows from all the existing. So existing building is D2 rating. That is very low uh, performance building. And that energy use intensity is uh, 290 kilowatt per meter square per year. So heating efficiency is very low, is 70% only. And all the other uh, fabric is very low. So we have upgrade, it's two scenario. First is if upgrading all them to the based on recent regulations uh, for Irish regulation. So these are the, all the U values is basing all available in Irish regulation for current buildings. And one scenario is we install the boiler with 90% accuracy of uh, uh, efficiency. And then we install the heat pump with 3.0 COP. So we can see that if we install a boiler, we can achieve B3 rating. But the target is B2 rating for uh, all the regulation and policy makers. So we, heat pump is only solution to target this building. This is a D2 rating. Let's suppose if we have more G and F rating, we need a lot of 
improvement required. And I think sometimes it's not achievable. This is a realistic result. You can say B2 to B1 we can achieve. It's not achieving A rating after heat pump. It might be the solar panel and other thing resources to uh, fulfill the requirement. Here's the final results. You can see that how uh, different scenarios like retrofitting by using boiler and also heat pump impact long-term 60-year life cycle assessment. This is the whole graph show that uh, in start, if you install the heat pump, the embodied carbon is very high because in the embodied carbon of heat pump and also all the retrofitting, deep retrofitting required for a old building as compared to the boiler. But also in after maybe few years, like 15 years, we can say we install the heat pump and it's a 20 years we install the boiler because the life, life of this equipment is uh, maybe after 15 years we have to change this. Even there's a lot of, you can say, the peak of the heat pump, but the end end you can see the cumulative result. You can see that the boiler is still have a higher, one, around 180, but as compared to the uh, heat pump is around 100, and I think it's emissions. Uh, and this is the main reason you can see that the cumulative result show that the, our long term heat pump is more beneficial because of the we using in future renewables energy and also and the heat pump uh, is much better than the long term. In the, I think is initially we need investment is required but the long term is very helpful for it, reduce the embodied commission. So therefore we need to trade off between this research so that the, how we can trade off with operational and carbon uh, embodied carbon energy between both different scenarios for the retrofitting. <coughs> so in this research, I would like to conclude this presentation. Introduce a novel approach for assessing building like assessment by using national building stock and available data. And offer valuable insight for energy policy maker to test different scenarios. And the future work will be uh, extend this more for more test on different uh, building types and more geographical information like test with different weather conditions as well. And also use a more machine learning and big data approaches. And I think they are also future work would be extend the knowledge base by using Gen AI and more advanced uh, topic that because case based reasoning and uh, uh, these are very old approaches. But this is, I think this work uh, done is a first year of PhD student. So hopefully the future work will extend more advanced technology and will be used for them. Uh, thanks for today and time for your attention. And I'm trying to have answer all these questions.